Michael James standing here with Mr. Stephen Frick. Stephen, tonight you get the type of match that you've always wanted against Jonathan Hudson, a Texas death match. I don't care if it's a funhouse of death match, Christmas death match, or in my case, a Texas death match. That's my specialty, because everyone wants to take me out. But nobody seems to be able to. Jonathan Hudson, your days are numbered. Michael James sitting here with Jonathan Hudson. Jonathan, tonight you're in a Texas death match against Mr. Stephen Frick. You're damn right I am a Texas death match. Now, Stephen Frick, you are stepping in the ring with the best damn independent professional wrestler on the planet today. And you're not just stepping in the ring with me, Jonathan Hudson, for a regular match. You're stepping in the ring with Jonathan Hudson for a Texas death match. I am going to kill you. I don't know how else to put it. I am gonna beat you to an inch of your life. Win or lose, I don't care. I want to destroy you, but there's one more man on my mind. There's one more piece of crap on my mind and he goes by Andy Mack. That son of a bitch stole a car and ran off and God knows where he is. But best believe I made some phone calls. Best believe I'm looking for you, Andy. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Frick, I'll deal with you tonight. Andy Mack, when I get my hands on you, that is when the death begins. Oh, I wanna kill that man. Do you have any more questions? Good. So confused. I don't even know what's going on here. Let's let's see who their opponents are. And their opponents. Joined right now by WWN Proving Ground Commissioner, Mr. Rick Thames. Rick Thames, welcome back to the Eagles Nest. What's going on, sir? Um, I, I made it a point. Usually, I'm watching the front door now, but I felt the need. I made need to make a point to the people uh, that watch WWN and all the officials and the other wrestlers here. The shenanigans that's happening here at WWE do not go unnoticed. It may look like there's no repercussions uh, from uh, the, the, the melees that uh, set playing here to WWE. Uh, I, I enforce restrictions, suspensions, and fines. And um, these guys are taking it to the board and they just they get, I don't know, they have that big lawyers, or they have deep pockets, or that key off, so he, he's been for a while and, and he, he, he knows the loops and the loopholes. But I just want to reiterate that I am on top of it. I am doing everything I want with but, 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 but Commissioner Rick, with, with all due respect, uh, you said things like this before that you were gonna stop the shenanigans like you said, and things just continue here. I mean the set 
have been running rough shot over here at WWE Proving Ground. And not just the set, but also star of the show Andy Mack, who and, and Mr. Steven Frick and, and Daniel Starling and all these people. I mean, it just seems sometimes like this is the Wild West of professional wrestling. There's a thing, Sean. them and I don't know what's wrong with their board. They explanation dates. They have there's so many loopholes and they're getting around. And the lines, I guess I'm just big enough I think I need to go higher on the lines. Maybe that kind of work, but um, Well I mean Commissioner Thames, I must say, do you think that you need to take more of a hands-on approach when it comes to disciplining wrestlers here in WWF proven ground? Well Sean, Sean, it's funny you mention that because I'm a bad sick and tired of what's going on here. I can do only so much. In my contract, it states that if I have to get physical with anybody here in the WWE Improvement Ground, I will not be fired, suspended, or fired. So I wait a minute, wait a minute. You're saying you're saying you could actually get physically involved with the wrestlers if you if you need to? Well, Sean, some of these guys here make me so cotton and picky. I, I can just strangle them. We are here showcasing young talent, young professional wrestlers aspiring to get somewhere in this business. And you have these, uh, I wouldn't call them veterans, but they've been in the business for quite some time. And they think they can come in and take a shortcut and, and chop these guys and put themselves on top. And it's not going to happen here, Sean. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to, I mean, I would, again, with all respect, Commissioner Rick, I mean, you said stuff like this before, and yet we still see week after week guys like the set. I mean, the set have two of our major championships right now. Rich Portiel is the heavyweight champion. Gus De La Vega, Francisco Chiazzo, the ACW tag team champions. I mean, it just seems like these guys get their way. Exactly, Sean. Those are the guys that are the champions. In my opinion, they're not true champions. True champions are guys that fight fair and square and earn their spot here in WWE. Trust me when I tell you, my eyes are on this, and if I have to get physical in there with Piazzo, uh, all the way down to the four gentlemen in the ring right now, if I see something wrong, I will go in there and confront it face to face and handle it at that time. Well, this is very interesting news here, wrestling fans. Commissioner Rick Thames basically saying that if he has to get hands-on here at WWE Improving Ground, that he'll do it. Well, I wanna, I wanna thank you, Rick, for coming here and joining me tonight and kicking things off by laying down the law here. And I'm gonna be very interested to see how different things are going forward. Making a way for me here. I, I had no intentions of coming up here, but I just felt the need to go. I, I threw somebody out of the chair. I don't even know. Who it was. Anyway, I, I apologize. Uh, I just had business to take care of. But I'm going to leave you with this. We do a great, fantastic, fine job. I'm going back to where I work at. All right, we'll be keeping an eye on this. Commissioner Rick Thames, thank you so much for joining us. And we've got a great match going on here right now. Even better, better together, or whatever they're calling themselves, New Ori and New Hadar? I don't know. I'm completely confused, wrestling fans. Every week is something something crazy going on in the, I guess you would say, the better together camp. But right now, I still call him Andrew Mitchell. is right on top of Little J here. Sends him into the ropes. But wait a minute, did Puerto Rican Hound Dog make attack? I don't know. Oh, no, I guess not. Catching him. No, here comes the Hound Dog. Andrew Mitchell down. Zakiris goes down hard. Oh, big chop by the Hound Dog. One for Zakiris. And the Puerto Rican Hound Dog is a big, big boy when he gets to kick and butt in the ring. Oh, my gosh. Sit down, slam. Is that it? One, two. Oh, no. New Ori, Andrew Mitchell manages to break up the pin somehow. I thought for sure that was over. Zakiris was dropped with a sit down power bomb move. But now New Ori is caught with a version of the Diamond Cutter. And I believe this is over. There you are. Giant win. Little J and Rob 
Raquel Gonzalez, the Puerto Rican Hound Dog, with a giant win, kicking things off this week at WWN Proving Ground. Wrestling fans, stay with us because we have an incredible show for you this week. We've got so much going on, including a Texas death match in our main event, and something you do not want to miss. Wrestling fans, I am so excited about what we have coming up this week. We're going to see in match number two, and we're going to have a WWE Proving Ground debut this week in this match. But again, we have so much coming up. I mentioned the Texas death match between former WWF Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion Jonathan Hudson and Mr. Steven Frick. But we have so much more, including a six-man tag team war uh, cruiserweight title match between Cypher and Daniel Starling. And here comes the debut wrestler. Making his WWE Proving Ground debut all the way from Chile. And now I'm not talking about Chile's down the street. I'm talking about the country of Chile. He's making his debut. It should be very, very interesting against the man that's become a veteran here at WWE Proving Ground. Definitely the most improved wrestler of 2022. And now here in 2023, Drake Xavier has made it known that he's done with tag team wrestling. He says he is done with carrying tag team partners. He basically fired Buzzsaw Chase McCoy as his tag team partner last week and said that he is firmly setting his sights on becoming a singles champion here at WWE Improving Ground. And if he has anywhere near the improvement in 2023 that he did in 2022, then I guarantee big things are coming for Drake Xavier. Also right now, Hans Camper, beautiful maneuvers. Look at that drop kick. Right on the money, took Drake Xavier down. See if he can follow up, comes in. Flying forearm in the corner, snap mare over. Hits the ropes, comes down. Close line, goes for the pin. Two count only, Drake Xavier manages to kick out. Again, what an exciting, exciting week we have here at WWE Proven Ground. Wrestling fans, do not go anywhere. Don't even look away for a second because we have such an exciting card. And as always, anything can happen here at WWE Proven Ground. And Hans Camper just found that out right there. And look at the offensive attack by Drake Xavier. Just that quickly, the tide can turn in the world of professional wrestling. And again, anything can happen here at WWF Proven Ground. We go from zero to 85 in a heartbeat. You just never know what's gonna happen. Right now, the young Hans Camper is making his debut in this all-important match here. WWF Proven Ground has not been in the United States long. Gut wrench suplex by Drake Xavier. Ah, he's very impressed with himself, and I don't blame him for a second. Drake Xavier, again, a true athlete, a true talent here in WWE Proven Ground. And I'm glad to see that Drake Xavier's finally decided to be his own man. He no longer has, no longer has a, a manager, apparently. No longer has tag team partners. He has felt that his time has come to shine in the singles division here at WWM Proving Ground. 
and to make a statement here that will be heard, seen, and recognized all throughout the world of professional wrestling. Drake Xavier feels like it is his time to become a true star in this business. And I believe he is absolutely on that path. There's a textbook vertical suplex by Drake Xavier. He's getting a little bit frustrated though and doesn't want to waste any time here because doesn't matter who your opponent is, you wouldn't be here in WWE Improving Ground if you weren't tough, if you didn't have some credentials. And Drake Xavier wants to make sure and not take this young man for granted in any way. Here he comes springboard into, that's called the world's greatest move. Followed up with the lion, somebody misses. Hans Kampfer is out. And here he comes, clothesline takes Xavier down. A second one takes him down again, setting him up, boot to the face, kick to the back of the head. He's saying this is the end, he picks him up, turns him over, spinning suplex down. Two, two and a half count only. Drake Xavier manages to escape. Hans Kamper needs to stay on top of him. He's arguing with the referee right now, but instead of arguing with him, he needs to stay on top of his opponent. This is his first opportunity to really show what he can do here to the fans at the WWN Pro Wrestling Training Center in Port Richie, Florida. He's going to the top rope. Let's see what's gonna happen. No, Xavier stops him, ouch. That is not the position Hans Camper wants to be in right now. Xavier muscles him up, my goodness, and drops him down with his version of a pile driver. And my God, I would say it is over. Drake Xavier with the impressive win. Again, big win for Drake Xavier. I'm sure we'll see more from Hans Camper in the near future. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you, he's being accompanied by the set incorporated, your host for Richie's Way, your reading and defending WWE Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion, Mr. RPA, that freaking wicked, Rich Hornayola. Yes, wrestling fans, we have a new segment here on WWN Proving Ground. I can't believe it, but apparently the set has bought time on the show to debut a talk show in the ring. You know what, well, 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 I'm being joined right now by by Chungus. It's the first time you've officially been up here in the Eagles time. Nest here at WWE. Welcome, welcome to the broadcast team. I'm happy to be here, but you see, I, I don't understand because it seems like the set get whatever they want around. You know? Well, you know, uh, Commissioner Rick Thames was just up here and he said that things are going to change, that the set are not going to run rough shot over things here at WWE Improvement Ground anymore, but... That, that's news to me. I, it sounds good, and I hope, it, I hope it happens, because I've been hitting so many foreign objects, Sean, it's unreal. Well, also, we might want to talk about that parking lot attack. Oh, I don't even know. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Apparently, contractually, we have to let him talk now. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Now, what's gonna happen is this is the debut of Richie's Way, and I'm your host, Rich Portaya. So right now, you, what you people should be doing is thanking me that I decided to bring this show right here to WWN Proving Ground. I don't think anybody's thanking me. No, I don't yes. think so, Sean. Uh, and I'm gonna take an opportunity to let everybody know that the reason this is happening is because anytime you see the set incorporated, there's big money. When you see Francisco Piazzo, it's big money. When you see Gus De La Vega, it's big money. When you see this Mamacita, it is big money. And when you see this big Dominican son, it is all money. Yo, 
know, Sean, this kind of segment's pretty perfect for these guys because they're all tough. Well, you know what? Because the set is doing so well. Well, the set is doing so great in the world of professional wrestling. I am going to give a chance to anybody in the locker room. Wait a minute, what? Anybody that thinks that they can go one yeah. on one Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute, it's right, Sean. I don't know what's going on here. My rematch. Well, wait, what is he saying? He's saying... Anybody that thinks that they have what it takes to... Sean, you might want to get down there right now. I know it's quite a walk to get down. I know. Like, I, but this is I, 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 what happens here. This is kind of a joke. You know, almost everybody has already have a match they're getting prepared for in the back. All the top contenders. What is going and, you know, on here? Rich knows that. And this, that's the it looks like a point. bunch of students and different people are coming down. And well, that's... Who wants to get back? Who's it going to be? Um, I can't believe what we're seeing here. Whoa, wait a minute. What are they doing? Uh-oh. Well, that's a boy. That's a uh, big Ray, who's a student here at the Pro Wrestling, WWE Pro Wrestling Training Center. He was here hoping to get a match tonight, but I don't think he had that thought for a second. He'd get a, a, is he going to actually get a Proving Ground Heavyweight title match tonight? And you know what? If he does, Sean, power to it, brother. You know what? First of all, what is your name? I'm the Bruce Ray Ray Elliott. Well, yeah, we've seen him here before. He's actually been very impressive in his first couple matches. But again, the, again, Ray Elliott is just a student here at WWE Pro Wrestling Training Center. You think that you have what it takes to beat me? You think you have what it takes to take this title away from me? What I recommend you do is when you go to the back, right before you come out and face me, you should pray. Oh, we're getting oh this is the apparently this you is a religious pray, segment of the of the night yeah, here. Yeah, and say, Mom, I might not make it home tonight because I'm going up against Rich Fork. No, I... Hey. Oh! Oh! Big Ray Elliott not backing down for a second, and the Richie's way side just fell. Richport Ayala just might have made a huge mistake, Chungus, because Ray Elliott might be a rookie, might be a student, but he is a big boy, and he's already shown he is not afraid of the Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion, Richport Ayala. Definitely not. He's a big boy. He's not afraid. And you know what, Sean? Here in professional wrestling, all it takes is to be better for a one, two, three. You got so, you know, it. Anything, anything could happen here at Proving Ground tonight. You're absolutely right. And I personally, I can't wait to see Ray Elliott with his chance at the title. Very exciting, very exciting. Michael James sitting here with one half of the Puerto Rican Hound Dogs, Damian Gemini. Damian, tonight you face a newcomer to the Proving Ground, El Estero. That's right, that's right. I'm excited, I'm pumped. I've come here since I started here. I have improved so much since I've started here. I've, I've won matches, I've lost, but that's okay. It's improvement. I'm here to prove that I belong here and I can be the best. And like I said, I'm excited to go up against this El Estero and I'm gonna come out victorious. And that's, that's a fact, okay? That's a fact. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. So, Chungus, did you enjoy the first episode of Richie's Way? Uh, you know what, Sean? I don't know about enjoy, but I'm glad to see a young guy like Ray Elliott getting a shot here tonight. So apparently, we have another debut here, Chungus. Okay. El Estero, which I, I believe that means the star. Oh, okay. does it? Is that, I, 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 I couldn't uh, tell you, Sean. I really couldn't tell you. And making his debut here at WWF Proving Ground. It's always exciting when we have new young athletes coming here to wrestle wow, for the first Sean, time. Looks like he's got some dance moves, Sean. That's a man after my own heart, to be honest. He, he does. He does. He definitely looks like he has some moves. Well, we'll see if he has the wrestling moves yes. in a minute here. He's taking on a 
top young athlete here at WWE Proven Ground, a young man who at only, I believe, 18 years old has already shown himself to have tons of heart in the ring. It's very impressive, and I can speak from experience, Sean. I've been in the ring with him many times, and he's, he's, got, he's got that energy, he's got that fire, and I think he's going to get a farewell here tonight. Well, this is going to be a real test for the debuting El Astaro. We'll see. I don't really know much about El Astaro. Do you, Chungus? Have you heard anything? I know there's always the rumor mill in the dressing room. There's always rumors going around. He's, just, he's got an interesting choice of attire here tonight. I'll say that. Well, I heard. Is it true, Chungus, that this man actually came to the arena tonight with his mask on? Yes. So yes. nobody has actually seen what this guy looks like. Baseball. He came. I mean, I guess that's old school, right, man? He came with the mask on and wanted to have uh, an air of mystery about himself going into things. Damian Gemini getting the fans here. Yeah, and the fans behind him. I saw the collar and elbow tie up. Well, start out technically, but El Starro, yeah. Handful of hair takes. Damian Gemini into the corner, and then oh, look at the little dance moves by Ella Starro. Not showing a lot of respect here to, uh, to Damian. Now he's mocking, mocking Damian Gemini. That might not be smart. Now Damian Gemini, from what I understand, was the run of the litter, but had but was tough and scrappy, and and he would fight his way to the teeth to get to get. Ahead of everybody else from the litter. But hearing that, that makes sense, Sean. He's a real, uh, real perseverant guy. He is. He is indeed. Sends Alstero into the corner. Yeah, shoulder tackle, takedown, and Alstero again. He's kind of a cocky individual, isn't he, Sean? Yes. Drop down. Comes over. Nice leap frog. Goes for the hip toss, blocked by Alstero. Gemini with a block. To the boot, what's he going for? Climbing the ladder to the top. Oh, look at this. He's walking the top rope. Oh, my. He's down into the Harakarana. Beautiful maneuver by Damian Gemini. Follows up with the clothesline in the corner. Snap may roll. And then the reverse kick there. Oh, he's going for the mask. He's going for the mask. Oh, who is it? Oh, we might find out. Oh, no, no, no. He went for the mask with El Astero. Quickly goes to the floor. Sean, it's clearly very important to El Estero that his, his identity is hidden here. Oh, we have a wow. dive over the top rope by Damian Gemini. Wow. That's the kind of thing he's going to have to do. He's going to keep pressing the gas, keep pushing the pedal on El Estero here. It was a big high-risk maneuver. It's one of those things where you get big rewards if you get it right, but if you get it wrong, it could be all over for you. Your Gemini's going back to the ropes right now. Now to the somewhat safer second rope. It's like, oh, oh Alistero actually caught him. Oh, and oh. dropped him throat first on the top rope. Really showed some power there, but that, that's pretty cheap to be honest, Sean. Well, Damian Gemini is in trouble right now as Alistero is turning up the heat in the corner. Very, very aggressive here. He's gonna choke him out. Well, it's all within the referee's count at that point. El Estero, obviously someone who has experience in the ring and knows how to take advantage of the rules, Chungus. Oh, wow. Wow. That might have caught him right in his face there. He might have lost a few teeth, Chungus. Yeah. Tampa Bay Buccaneers can maybe use him as a field goal kicker. Comes in. European uppercut on him. Sends Damian Gemini into the corner. Oh, but there's the cockiness again, the cockiness of El Estero, and he, he paid for it that time. Here we go, here we go, this is that fire I want to see. Damien's on fire here. Yep, Jim I coming back, Enziguri takes El Estero down. Let's see how we can follow it up. Come on, kid, go Damian for it. Damien Gemini it. going back and looks to the top rope, and El Estero is up and catches him with a vicious left, another one. And Damian Gemini looks to be in trouble right now, Chungus. Alistair hooking him for a possible superplex, but Damian Gemini is fighting back. Oh, he's going for the mask. Headbutt brings 
El Estero down. Davey into the top rope, but El Estero manages to hit the ropes, knocks Damian Gemini off balance. Oh, super kick, you can hear that connect from up here. Goes for the pin, one, two, and three. El Estero, wow, what a debut victory. I must say that super kick, very reminiscent of somebody that used to be here at the end. Well, I'm not even gonna say his name. I'm not even gonna say his name. I think that hair looks a little familiar too. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know either. But I might have to get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna try to. We need to do some investigative jur uh, journalism here to find out some more about El Estero, a man that just got a major debut victory here at WWM Proven Ground. Interesting start to a hot night here at WWF Proving Ground. El Astaro with a, I gotta say, a very impressive debut victory. Very impressive, Sean, but still very suspicious. Uh, I don't know, like you said, we have to do some investigative journalism and get to the bottom of who that really is. Well, we have a, yeah, the DOM and K9 Alpha T. Teaming up here, it's gonna be an exciting tag team contest. The DOM and Alpha T, both these guys, really still, they've been here for a few weeks on and off, still looking to make a real name for themselves. It's not tag team division here, Sean, so it, it, it's gonna be an uphill battle. It is, it is. They're taking on a team that honestly has pulled out a few wins recently, especially after coming under the tutelage of our Perez. Right, Sean, it's another team that me and my partner Scyther have been in the ring with, and they are, they're, they're tough competitors. The team of the next room we are master is the subtle pitch raiser, Well, now I gotta tell you, I think one of the reasons why we've seen such a difference in Baxter and Razor the last few weeks is I think they were having trouble when they first came here from Chile with the, with the language barrier. And Aris Perez, is, he speaks um, various languages and he's here not just as a manager, but an interpreter for Baxter and Razor. And, and he's made a giant difference and how these guys are doing as a tag team here. But again, what a test for them against the DOM and K9 Alpha T. Yeah, Alpha, he's a big dude. He's a big dude, I'll tell you that. He is, and the DOM, he's about as tough as you get. Last week, had a real toe-to-toe -to -toe battle against the veteran Sideshow. Yes, yes, yes. He, he lost to Sideshow, but he really took him to the limit. And Sideshow told me after that match that he was impressed with the DOM, and he really thinks the DOM is going to go a long way here at WWF Proving Ground and in the world of professional wrestling. That's potential. Now, Sean, you're going to have to help me out here, brother. Which one is Bastard and which one's Razor? Razor is the one not wearing that. Okay, got it. So that's Razor just to yes. the, the shoulder tackle there from the from, from From what I understand, Bastard, um, he had a, a, some sort of injury, he was in some sort of accident where his face um, had some injuries to his facial muscles, and that's why he's wearing the mask now. But it does make them easier to tell apart. Yes, yes. There's a tag to Baster. Yeah, Baster is in. We'll see the tag team skills of this team. Oh, it's a double back double, elbow right yep. there. He comes up, real barrel maneuver, drops him right on the DOM. Oh, and a kick out, only one. Well, Baster and Razor 
should definitely have the advantage when it comes to tag team cohesiveness in this match since they have been teaming for such a long time. I believe this may be the first time the DOM and Alpha T have actually teamed. Oh, okay, we see it right there. That can, it can be hard to play. Well, for the DOM, makes a smart move getting over there, making the tag to Alpha T when you see. That's probably the smartest thing he's done yet. Get the big man in there. He outweighs both of these men by a significant amount, I'd say. Definitely oh, the power, power man, the power man of, of both teams here in this match. Oh, what a body slam. K9 Alpha T. Has a, has a football background. You can see this guy would make a great linebacker. Just picks him up and slams Razor down hard. The DOM selling one more time. Get in there one more time. Alpha T's listening to him. Here he goes. Oh, he's walking around the ring with him. And slams him down. How many more of those body slams can Razor take here? Wow, and he kicked out. Needs to kick out. But man, Razor has to be hurting there. This outlook, whoa, okay. I was gonna say that was a really stupid move if he would have just let Razor make the tag, but said he was taunting him. Here comes the DOM with those jabs and then the giant right. And that's one thing that the DOM has impressed me with is, man, this guy could slug him out with anybody. Comes in with those giant haymakers. And Razor, wow, the back of Razor has to be feeling incredibly punished at this point. DOM hits the ropes. Nice, nice leg drop. Right across the throat. Was a little bit cocky in its delivery, but man, still effective. Yeah, Razor is hurting him there, Sean. Razor desperately needing to get to his corner to make the tag. He does not want to be stuck on the opposite side of the ring. Get out of the way, ref. Razor backs DOM to the corner. Is he going to be able to make no back white? DOM sucks. And so Gary by Razor, makes the tag to Baster. Baster. Here he comes, oh, Orphan takes the DOM down. A shot, yes, shot for Alpha T. Flying uppercut, snap mirrors the DOM over. Whoa, what was that? Oh, comes in the flying European uppercut, goes for the pin, one, two count only. Here to break it up. This is with the close by Razor Cops. Oh my, he took him off his feet. He did, he brought the big man down and might have taken him out of the match, which would have been smart, but here comes the DOM back. Capitalized Brooks here. Razor drops him down face first on the mat. Interesting maneuver there. It sure was, but here comes Baster, he's not finished yet. What, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's got he's Baster got up. Has him on his shoulders. What's he gonna do with him? But no, Baster's making his way out. It. No, body slam by the DOM. Baster is down. We're going to see what the DOM can do, if he can do something to finish Baster off. On the second row, comes with the diving elbow, misses it. There was no water in the pool there. Let's see what Baster can do. Baster going to the top rope. And frog first, frog splash. One, two, and Baster in range. With the win. Wow, that was impressive. Definitely a very unique pairing, Sean. Very unique. It was. I'm sure we'll be seeing more of the DOM and K9 Alpha T. But oh my God, there's a math guy coming our way right now. Oh, is that Ellis Darrow? Is that? Yeah. Is that? I think. Is, is, is he coming? I think he's here. Are you serious? He's right behind me. Uh oh, he speaks English apparently. So 
I was. So Chungus has left the booth and the mysterious masked man, Ellis Farrow, has joined me. Um, welcome, sir. Um, see, senor. Um, oh, it's good to be here, Sean Davis. My English is not very good, but I do speak enough to communicate and converse with you, superstar Sean Davis. Wait a minute. Uh, I'm sorry, Ellis Starro, but you remind me of somebody that's been in this booth many times with me. No, I know what you're Are you kidding me right now? What you're saying, and I got, if I can make one quick statement real quick on behalf of myself, because I know that there's been some confusion lately. Uh, yo, no soy, Andy Mack. We got the genius of the sky. Yeah, I know we've got a guy. I know we've got a big match coming up right here, but I mean this is a joke. Obviously, this guy is a, is a competitive wrestler. I know he is. Out. I know he's. I'm talking about my my new color commentator apparently. Yeah. 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 saw that super kick and those long manes coming out of the, the match. But this is for the fans at home right now, well, I'm just going to say it. You are star of the show, Andy Mack. I don't know what the heck you're trying to fool. Coming out here under a mask is Ella Saro. I don't know what you're trying to pull here, Andy Mack. Last we saw, you super kick student Ray Elliott and you stole his damn car. I said a minute ago, Sean Davis, yo, no soy, Andy Mack, you have me confused. This beautiful name you see here, this is a piece of the mask. I am actually a bald-headed young man. Oh, with yeah, crystal okay. Crystal clear blue eyes. Okay, you just happen to have that same annoying southern accent. Annoying southern, excuse me. He is the accomplished by Dexter Razor. He is the most child of the island. With, with the way things are running around here and the treatment that he's got based on I just had a successful debut, I'm 1-0. and oh. You should be here yeah, offering was, me a conversation with Rick Thames to have a title shot, much less sitting here criticizing yeah, I, me and accusing oh me of my being God. somebody you know, that I am not. Okay, okay, settle down over there. You know, we do have, we do have an important, we have an important match here. Something that's gonna really determine where these guys fall in the contendership here for various titles, singles titles. Perez Perez apparently having trouble getting his jacket off. Jay Sky is, is offering to help, but I don't know about that. Well, apparently he's helping him out. I'm a little surprised by that. Oh, that was disrespectful. It's an improvement if you ask me, but yeah. By the way, where is Commissioner Rick Thames? I thought I heard he was looking for you to levy some fines for carjacking the car of one of our students here. I mean, not not just the Rick Thames, but I understand the law is looking for you to do it. Once again, my English is not perfect. Sure. But I can pretty well understand that you're accusing me of being the star of the show, Andy Mack, who I am not. Also, I read in the newspaper, the New York Times, as a matter of fact, that that man that was super kicked by Andy Mack agreed not to press charges in return for some autographs for his wife and his nephew. Yeah, I know as a fact that's not true. There is that, for wrestling fans, trust me, there is no truth to any of that that El Astaro is saying right now. This is classic, this is classic. Pretty round classic WWN. We want to claim lies and fraudulency when it has something to do with one of the young and up and coming talent that we don't want to be as successful as he was making himself. We want to write him off and set him to the side. We want him to be a nice addition, a B-plus player, when he's clearly an A-plus player with star talent, El Astaro quality, if I, if I may. Mac has been behaving the way he is, and, if, and you know what? I also think it's impressive how often he's left Jonathan Hudson, the former Proving Ground champion, playing in the middle of the ring. Well, Jonathan Hudson has his hands full later tonight with Mr. Stephen Frick, a man that has helped Andy Mack recently, which is shocking to all of us that have been here for a while after Andy Mack and Stephen Frick had. 
had uh, one of the most vicious and heated feuds in the history of WWF Open Grounds. But tonight, Steven Fritz steps in the ring with a Texas yeah. death match against Jonathan Hudson. And, and I, you know what, I really hope you will stay right where you are because I wouldn't want any match to interfere in what's going to be happening later tonight in this Texas death match. According to you, Andy Mack is long gone. He's far away. He's in Mexico. He's in Canada. He's off somewhere in the Bahamas getting jiggy with well, the pretty I, ladies. Oh, I, oh my God. And sit here and, and act like he's going to interfere and act like I'm going to do something. I just had my debut match against the Hound Dog. Well, I think I'm a little bit short of getting in the ring. Well, it's clear that Andy Mack is willing to do anything here at WWE Improver. But let's get back to the match we're watching here. Three top contenders here at WWE Improver Grounds. Jay Sky, awesome Andy Vale, and Iris Perez. Jay Sky headed to the top, but gets caught with that boot by Adam Vale. Adam Vale recently has been embroiled in a feud with the German monster Krieger. Picks him up. Is Krieger him over. being Andy Mack in disguise too, Sean Davis? No, no, I would not do that. Let's see what Adam Vale is setting up Jay Sky for right here. He's just choking him out in the corner. And now turning back his way to Aries Perez, who's coming back. Jay Sky in a precarious situation, Sean Davis. Certainly is. Adam Vale going on the attack, picks it up. Oh, brings them right in. Um, I do not know what these guys are trying to do right now. I wouldn't want to be in the position of Aries Perez or Jay Sky at this point. Here comes Adam Vale, comes in. Oh, Jay Sky out of the way. Wow, you can break your neck doing something like that. He is. What's coming up? I don't know. Jay Sky positioning Eric Perez for something, or is it the other way around? Oh, and he comes back. But did he catch the knees of Adam Vale? They're both down now. Everyone's down. Looks like a, a train wreck here in the ring right now. They're not. The advantage could go to anybody's problem. It's very likely the first man to his feet will win this contest. Well, I'll tell you, anything again can happen here at WWM Proving Ground. We're gonna see which man can get to their feet first and follow up here in this match. Looks like they're all getting up there. Jay Sky up first with that right punch to Adam Vale. A knee from Vale to Jay Sky, a form from Aries Perez to Adam Vale. A chop by Perez to Jay Sky. A knee from Vale to Aries Perez, a form from, excuse me, I can't even keep up with all this action that's happening here, El Star. Double boot brings Adam Vale down. I can keep up because I have a classically trained luchador. Yeah, okay, Mr. Luchador. Sure. Look at this. Oh, look at that. Amazing. Full Nelson into the German suplex, followed up by the super kick. How I won the match that I was in tonight. Brings him down. Version of a brain buster suplex right there. Let's see if he can follow up. Adam Vale's back in the ring. This is the line. Comes in, catches Jay Sky. Sends him in. Oh, oh and brings him over. Drives Jay Sky down hard. Once again, now Adam Vale is in control of this match. Hey, oh, brings Aries over. Aries lays on his feet. And so carried by Aries. Aries Perez. Tornado four onto the back of the head, but Jay Sky is coming down with a drop kick. Sends Aries Perez flying off of awesome Adam Vale. What a match we've got here this week, LS Star. This is some action packed action, Superstar Shawn Davis. Oh, Aries Perez getting caught that time. Adam Vale up. Jay Sky swings, gets caught by Vale. Vale with a submission hold here. Jay Sky counters. Super kick. Hooks him up and brings him down hard. 
I think this one could be over. One, two, and three. J Jay Sky with a giant win. Jay Sky, your winner. No, no, soy, Andy Mack. Michael James standing here with the victorious Jay Sky. Jay, tonight, big win tonight against Anna Vale and Artes Perez. Are you surprised? Are you surprised at all? Is anybody surprised at what happened tonight? I was on a winning streak. A winning streak! I had the perfect plan. At the last show I was at, I lost. But that doesn't matter because I grew. I grew stronger. I grow stronger from the losses. And that's why this week, I had to come back stronger than ever. And I beat two guys, Aries Perez and Adam Vale. And anybody they throw in my way is gonna be the exact same result from here on out. Because I'm Jay Sky, and I'm always two steps ahead of everybody. former champion in a mandatory rematch, but I'm telling you, these guys had a classic before, and I know they're gonna have a classic one again. Here he comes in the ring right now, the former champion, Daniel Starling, a man who is determined to get what he says is his title back tonight. But he's in for a tough, tough match. You know, I've, uh, I've, I mean, um, I was gonna say yes. You have faced you know, both Andy of the Mack men in this match. Has has had a series of matches with uh, with Daniel Starling. I don't know that he's ever wrestled Scyther though. Well, maybe not. I thought thought he has. But I know some of that history of that rivalry during this match. All right, well, here. ACW Cruiserweight Championship. I followed. It. I follow okay, all right. I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you studied up El Astaro before coming here tonight. So here comes the champion. He comes the ACW Cruiserweight Champion. The man who took that title from Daniel Starling Got just a, little a wacky, few huh? weeks ago. You look a little wacky, huh, Sean Davis? Yeah, well, me or him? Him. Oh, yeah, he's a little wacky. Ladies and gentlemen, it's first, the challenger, standing to my right, from Virginia Beach, Virginia, weighing in at 183 and 3 fourths pounds, he is the imperceptible. I don't think he even knows what that, that word means, but... He is from the quarry, weighing in at 180 pounds, representing the Mad Men at Hour, he is your reigning and defending ACW Cruiserweight Champion, this is Cypher! What a match this is gonna be, El Astaro. This is one for the true wrestling aficionados out there. Gonna be a great technical match. Could also turn into a brawl, you just never know. 
Scyther can do it all in the ring, whether it's technical wrestling, whether it's a brawl, whether it's a fight. Daniel Starling also can. You know, it's really nice of uh, Proving Ground Management to give Daniel Starling a rematch for this championship. As I recall from my studies of that Andy Mack Daniel Starling feud, Daniel Starling in three separate matches was unable to defeat Andy Mack, and yet he was not awarded another chance at the title. Instead, instead he well, ran that's it against Stephen Frick. He was set against Stephen Frick, Andy Mack was, which, which probably led to all these events transpiring. We've got a great Cruiserweight Championship match here, and I'm ready to get it going. Daniel Starling, a great champion during his run. Scyther, the madman, the unpredictable. You never really know where he's coming from. This is anybody's ball game. Wastelock takedown by Scyther, and that was with authority. Scyther is quite, quite a, a stocky guy. He's a bit of a powerhouse down there. He's got that low center of gravity. Oh, yeah, just because you might be under the 200 pound mark does not mean for a second you don't have extreme power. These guys are all top athletes, and pound for pound, these guys can go with anyone. Starling, though, what a technician this guy is in the ring, I'll tell you. A real throwback to the days of the Briscoes, the Funk Brothers. That's what, I, I mean, the, so many. Well, what's Scyther doing here? Having a little bit of fun in there. Doing some squats, having a good time. Scyther is a weird dude, but man, can he ever wrestle? And Proof was right there with that takedown. Well, he's trying to play the mind game with Starling, trying to get him riled up, which is a great way to, to handle a man of his with his pride and his ego. If you can get him riled up, he can make a mistake. He's not better be careful. Like we talked about, Starling knows his way around the body part, and if you let him hold on to your arm or your leg too long, he will mess you up. This is very true. And that's one thing Daniel Starling really enjoys doing, is picking a bar body part and just wearing it down. He's trying to pop Scyther's head off. He is. See him cranking that side headlock, but Scyther. Kind of looks like a zit. He's trying to pop he's away. Fighting his way up, and reverses it to a hammerlock into the side headlock. Now reverses it back to a hammerlock, back to the side headlock. What a wrestling we're seeing here. Back into the hammerlock, back into the side headlock. Back into the hammerlock, back into the. No, wait a minute. And a, sl a European slap on the butt there by Scyther to Daniel Starling. Again, Scyther can wrestle with the best of them, but then big backdrop. Beautiful backdrop by Scyther to Starling. Goes for the pin. One, two, two down only. Starling kicks out. Oh, the Starling is feeling it right now. I'll tell you, a backdrop like that. There's nothing more painful to your lower back than a big backdrop. Starling has Scyther up and drops him. His leg on his knee, and now he's going to work. This is this is Texas Dragon School by Daniel Starling. And again, this is what Daniel Starling's game is all about. Choosing a body part and then just going to town on it. And that's what he's doing right now on the left leg of Scyther. Daniel Starling with all of his weight coming down on the leg of Scyther. The NBA playoffs going on right now, and, and Daniel Starling is acting like a great point guard right now. He's finding the weakness on the defense, and he is attacking it. He's attacking the knee of Scyther. Certainly is. First of all, I've never been a big big fan of uh, baseball. He says the NBA player. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. I only watch wrestling, my friend. Especially the wrestling here at WWN, WWN Proving Ground. There's nothing more exciting in the world of sports or entertainment than the action here at WWN Proving Ground. I watch wrestling too, Sean. So I bet you, yeah. Proving Ground. You, your lucha, your lucha that you study in there, El Starro. Daniel Starling, wow, you could hear the, that punch connect as a matter of fact, all the way up here in, in the Eagles net. As a matter of fact, I've studied the star of the show, Andy Mack, who's a Proving Ground regular, almost I bet like you have. royalty. I bet I've you studied. have. 
I bet, I bet you. I bet you're extremely familiar with Star of the Show, Andy Mack, Ella Starro. What a joke you are! As you can be, being a different person. What a joke you are! Starling was right on the attack of the leg, but now going for the pin. I'm a little insulted to be called a joke by a man wearing cargo shorts, but that's beside the point. We've got a great cruiserweight championship going on. Well, Daniel Starling, I'm a little surprised he's been changing up his his game plan here. First going for the leg, then he was going for the pins instead of submission, and now just flagrant chokes. Doesn't know Daniel Starling very well, but has seen him in matches before. I gotta, mm. I gotta think that goes back to Scyther kind of embarrassing him, getting under his skin, getting him irritated. He's lost a bit of focus, and now he's regained it, as you can see. Now he's going back to the leg, that's right. Oh, a little woo from Daniel Starling there. Uh, Reference to one of his favorite wrestlers growing up is signaling going for the figure four leg lock, but no, Scyther counters it, sends Starling all the way to the corner. Wow. What power by that kick of Scyther to send Daniel Starling flying that hard in the corner. No, not at all. Big chop, yeah, brings Starling down. Another one, Starling goes down again. Excuse me, Scyther goes down again. But then Scyther comes back and Starling goes down. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The tide can turn so quick here in the world of professional wrestling. Scyther coming back, coming with his roll. His roll in ball. Yeah, but, but he's still favoring, he's still favoring that leg but comes back with a high impact forearm, goes for the pin, two, oh, so close to the three count. Somehow Daniel Starling manages to get out and Scyther has to be feeling frustrated right now, but he's trying to rally the fans here at the WWE Pro Wrestling Training Center to get behind him, give him that extra edge to finish off the former champion, Daniel Starling. He hooks him. Oh, wait a minute, what was that? What just happened? Why did Scyther push him off? Oh, wait a minute, that's Catalina Perez. That's Catalina Perez, who has helped Daniel Starling recently. And we still don't know why. Reversal. One, two, three. And Scyther gets the big win. He did not have the right. No. You disparage the name of Andy Mack and Daniel Starling and your team. I didn't see that at all. I didn't see that at all. Scyther with a big win here. Scyther gets the win. It looked like things. Don't take that. Don't take that, Starling. Oh, Starling coming back with an attack to the back. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, yeah. Catalina Perez, we still don't even know why Catalina Perez is helping Daniel Starling. But Starling puts the belt in the middle of the ring. What is he doing? Daniel Starling placing the belt in the middle of the ring, picking Cypher up. What is he doing here? Setting him up, pile driver position. Pile driver on the title! Pile driver on the title! He could have broken his neck right here! Oh my God, Daniel Starling's taking things too far! He's taking things too far! And then laying that belt on Scyther right there. Come on! What poor sportsmanship! What poor sportsmanship, Ella Starro! Can we get a mop out here? Home with me. Oh my God, we need to get some EMTs. We need to get some help out here. Scyther has been injured. We need to get some help out here. Where's the help? What is going on? Scyther has been injured and we need to get some help out here. Being taken that pile driver on the title like that. Oh, no, I, I don't know if you can damage his brain. Sean, I don't know. But with you, I think. Fans, we're gonna have to we're gonna get some help to the ring and then we'll be back right after this. Michael James sitting here with the imperceptible Daniel Starling. Daniel, tonight not quite the outcome you were looking for. Your thoughts. I don't know what you're talking about, this not quite the outcome I was looking for. I walked away and Scyther may never walk again. If you can make it 
next week to the WWE Proving Ground. I will take back my Cruiserweight Championship that I never lost. I had one mistake. I had one mistake and it cost me everything. Scyther, you are that mistake and I took care of that tonight when I spiked you on your pencil neck right on top of my ACW Cruiserweight Championship. So if you've got feeling in your legs next week, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna take that championship back. Michael James Cena here with Chungus, Tito Torres, and Benji Neptune. Tonight, you guys face the set. Oh, that's right, six man tag team action once again. We're gonna go to war with the set incorporated. And I got my eyes on Rafael Delgado because last week he wanted to kick me while I was down, while I was unconscious, laying in the middle of the ring. But tonight, Delgado, the hardest working man, is gonna get his hands on you. <sighs> for weeks, for weeks, the set incorporated has been the biggest pain in our ass that is possible. They've cost me championship matches. They've made Benji's life a living hell. Hello. Tell him, Benji. Hello. Tell him. Tonight, you're going to get a taste of the wild side experience, and you're going to be on Benji time. Oh, yeah. Wrestling fans, we are back, and it's time for the WWN Proving Ground Heavyweight Championship match. The match that was made earlier tonight with our own WWN Pro Wrestling Training Center student, Ray Elliott, stepping up and say, answering the challenge of the champion, Rich Cordayela. And man, what guts this kid has to be getting in the ring with our heavyweight champion tonight. Man, what an opportunity this kid has too, stepping in the ring with the one and only Rich Portaella, international superstar, the second WWN Proving Ground heavyweight champion, and a member of the set incorporated. Here he comes now, right here he comes to the ring, our champion, Rich Portagala. Catalina Perez holding the championship belt as the champion makes his way into the ring. There it is. That's right, he's saying, there's your champion, Rich Portagala. Coming in the ring with all the confidence in the world, and you can't blame him. Rich Portiella just finishing up a tour of major cities in the United States. And again, offering up this opportunity, the first man to make it in the ring earlier. And it was WWF Pro Wrestling Training Center student, Ray Elliott, who's only had a couple matches so far under his belt. And what a chance to get in the ring with the heavyweight champion. This also could be a very dangerous situation anytime you're putting somebody relatively inexperienced in the ring with somebody of the experience level of Rich Portaella. There they go, they lock it up. Oh, and Ray taking the, taking the arm right there. 
twisting it hard. And you can see the skills already this young man has learned here at the WWF Pro Wrestling Trans. And oh, he is clobbering back and forth on Rich Portahilla, just pounding away. And he just caught the attention of the champion right there. The champion sends him in. Oh, and what a lariat. Takes Ray Elliott down. Rich Portiella talking the smack right here. And this is where I'm afraid for young Ray Elliott as the champion Rich Portiella just stomps away on him, taunting him, slapping him in the back of the head, and now rubbing his face in the mat. What disrespect by Rich Portiello right now. My gosh, the referee, Jordan, needs to do something to, to pull Rich Portiello off. Oh, oh, but Ray fights back, punch to the stomach, another punch to the stomach, but then catches a big knee from your champion, Rich Portiello, brings him over, slapping his face. Goes for the pin, but no, Ray Elliott kicks out. Rich Portiella talking the smack in the ring right now. We'll see if Ray Elliott can fight back. Oh, here he comes with a giant chop. That caught the champion off guard. Boot by the champion. Big forearm shot takes Ray Elliott down. Man, you've got to give so much credit to young Ray Elliott stepping in the ring with the international superstar and current heavyweight champion, Rich Portiello, a man that has wrestled in Japan. He's wrestled all over the United States, just slapping Ray Elliott in the back of the head and now slams him head first into the turnbuckle. Again, just mocking him and now stomping away on him. Series of boots by the heavyweight champion, Rich Portiella. Rich Portiella just torturing young Ray Elliott now. And Catalina Perez taunting him with the title. Rich Portiella, now he's taking his time to jaw with the fans here at the WWF Pro Wrestling Training Center. Ray Elliott out of the way, goes for a scoreboard. What to? And maybe no. I thought for a second we could have had the upset of the century, but no. Rich Portiello right back. Slams him down and that gets the win. Here is the winner, any surprise that Rich Portaiello won, but here he's the continuing the attack. Now this is completely unnecessary. Rich Portaiello now uh, just mercilessly beating on, wait a minute, Commissioner Rick Thames out. He said earlier he wasn't gonna take anything before. He wasn't gonna let the set continue to run rough shot. Whoa, wait a minute, what's going on here? Rick Thames just to, I think he just reversed the decision and said Ray Elliott won by disqualification. He's out here because of the, the way the set has acted, running rough shot over things here in WWF Road Ground. Ray Elliott with the biggest win of his young short career. And Rich Portaiella is living. He goes, he's throwing the chair on the commissioner. He just took a punch in a half. Here comes Dustin LaVega, and Dustin LaVega takes a punch from Rick Thames. Here goes Rafael Delgado, he goes down with a punch from Rick Thames. Now Francisco Fiasco gets caught by a big right by Rick Thames. But now Rafael does, oh my god, Commissioner Rick Thames is no longer an active wrestler. What is going on? This is crazy. The set is attacking, here comes Chungus, here comes Benji Neptune, here comes Tito Torres. They're coming in and the fight is on right now. I can't believe what we just saw. Here comes Mr. Rick Thames.
again physically involved with uh, taking on the set. He took down each member one by one, but then the odds got against him. And mass chaos has broken out here tonight, here at the WWN Pro Wrestling Training Center in Port Ritchie. I don't know, do we have a match here or not? Is this a match or is this not a match? I'm not sure what's even going on here. Do we officially have a match? I don't want them, we've got a fight right now. We have a heck of a fight, all six men out there fighting and brawling and things are absolutely out of control here at WWE Proving Ground. I mean, we don't even have a referee in the ring. Is this a match or is this not a match? What's going on? There was a scheduled match tonight, but this fight broke out and fans, I honestly don't know what's going on right now. I can't tell you what's happening other than a, an absolute brawl has broken out here at the WWE Pro Wrestling Training Center. And what, what is happening here? I'm not sure, I mean, was it, I don't think this was ever even officially a match, and now, now the fight has, has spilled out to the floor, and it appears, I don't know what's going on, because things are out of control here, and we've got no referee, Commissioner Rick Thames got involved, what is going on right now? What are you guys saying, huh? Right away, the psycho, if you're not going for the hills, try to hit us with another four up, try to steal a win, We've been going after this for far too long. Far too long. We are sick and tired. Chokis, Benji, and Kilo with the three of you next week. No rules, no disqualifications, and a street fight. Whoa, a challenge has just been laid We're down here. Chungus, Tito, and Benji saying they want a street fight next week here at WWE Proving Ground. Rick Thames is back after that attack by the. Tito, Whoa. giant match has been set for next week. No pun intended as the set incorporated of Aaron will take on Chungus, Benji, Neptune, and Tito Torres next week in an anything go street fight. And man, what a war that's gonna be. Wrestling fans, you do not wanna miss that. And we're gonna be right back with your main event. Very often, 
and because they have in the history of wrestling were considered the most dangerous match possible. And wow, what a war these two guys had last week. And it's gonna be go up even higher notch right now. I, man, what a fight this is gonna be, Benji. You know what makes it even crazier? On one corner we've got Stephen Frick, like he's, he's absolutely nuts. In the other corner we've got Jonathan Hudson, absolute beast. Imagine a chair in his hands. Imagine oh. power. We've seen it. There's, that's my guy right there. Here he is. Jonathan Hudson. There he is, Jonathan Hudson, the very first WWN Proving Ground heavyweight champion. And what a champion he was until, well, many would say he was screwed out of his title. The combination of Andy Mack and the Set Incorporated. But then recently, Mr. Stephen Frick interjecting himself into the situation. And now, I don't know if Mr. Stephen Frick might have bitten off more than he could chew here. Getting into a street based on Texas right match with Jonathan Hudson. They're going at it right away here. Spinebuster oh, right away. And Stephen Frick is in trouble right here at the outset. Benji, who do you have in this match? Who do, who do you think's gonna win? I'm gonna say it right now. Jonathan Hudson is gonna end Stephen Frick. He has no chance. You think he's gonna end him tonight? So it's not gonna just be a win. You think he's gonna end him for good? Uh, he's gonna end him. Jonathan Hudson's pissed off. I saw him backstage. Oh. And the way he was walking, his face is turning red. Oh yeah, it's over. Jonathan Hudson is an absolute beast in the ring, like you said. Just whips Stephen Frick into that corner with all that power behind him. The hard buckle. I mean, these guys, to say they don't like each other would be the understatement of the century. And again, whipping Mr. Stephen Frick back first into that corner. Mr. Hudson is playing no games tonight. Stephen Frick should have started this. I understand you're crazy, buddy, but it ain't looking too good for you. And for the fans at home watching, again, to go over the rules of the Texas death match, there's no disqualification, there's no count out, there's no stopping it. The only way you can win is after a fall is won, the match does not end, but you have a 10 count to answer the bell, and then if you can't answer the bell, the match is over. So basically, the match only ends when one man cannot continue, and that's what makes this match so dangerous. Right now, Mr. Stephen Frick appears to be taking a little bit of a break on the outside here, which is actually very smart from a psychology based uh, standpoint here. You know, Jonathan Hudson was in full control, but what? Oh, here comes Frick. But Hudson catches him. DDT brings Mr. Stephen Frick down hard. Hudson could, he really should probably go for a pin here and see if he can put Mr. Frick away, but no, instead he's stalking him. Benji, this might be part of his, his game plan to wear down Stephen Frick as much as he possibly can before going for a pin and before trying to get that win on, on the 10 count. He's been waiting a whole entire week to get his hands on Frick. Jonathan Hudson's a focused man right now. Here he comes, discus forearm! Take Stephen Frick down. He's, He's going. There it is. One, two, and three. Jonathan Hudson wins the first fall. There we go. Like I said. Stephen Frick. Will he make it? Will he get to his feet? He might, he might need to stay down. Referee's already up to six. Now to the seven. If Steven Frick can't get up, this match is over. Nope, oh, well, apparently the count. Oh, and Hudson is on top of him. Wow, he about caved his chest in with that chop. Steven Frick fights back. That was nothing compared to Hudson's. Oh, my gosh. You can just hear the flesh smacking the flesh all throughout the WWF Pro Wrestling Transfer. Hudson picks Frick up, brings him down, back of his head on his knee, 
And is he gonna go for his second fall here? I don't know. Hudson's looking, I think he's thinking about it. He said, no, 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 no. He said he's not done with him yet. He's not done at all. He's picking Steven Frick up. Sets him up, but no, Frick is back. Frick is fighting back. Oh, chop from Frick to Hudson. Sends Hudson into the ropes. He's got a second Hudson, oh, Hudson stopped oh, himself. No, no. Frick's still holding on. He is. Oh, what a blow by Hudson. Hudson's gonna go, is gonna go what he wants right now. Frick is stopped. Oh, Hudson just pounding away. The fans counting along. What brutal shots by Jonathan Hudson on Steven Frick. I think Steven Frick is out Benji Neptune. Somebody call an ambulance for this guy. It is not going too well for him. Well, Steven Frick, one of the toughest individuals in the history of the World Wrestling Network, but he, I don't know how much more he can take. What's Hudson setting him up for? Picks him up, pile driver on the apron, no. Uh -oh. Frick breaks it, blocks it, oh, shot to the throat of Hudson. And a boot, but the PDT on the ring apron. And fans, that is all hard wood there. That is a hard Oh my part God. Of the and yes, no doubt, because it's wood right on top of steel posts. And my God, that could be it right there. Benji Neptune, we might have just seen the end of this match. Mr. Steven Frick could easily take the win here if he could get Hudson back. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Steven Frick. Grabbing a steel chair. I don't like the looks of what's coming up here, Benji Neptune. And I, oh my gosh. Got, got some wires there. He's really got nice. a cord, he has a cord. Now, now, what is he doing with that? Oh my gosh. Well, in the past, he's tried choking out Jonathan Hudson. And I don't like what his plans might be here. DDT on the floor. Ladies and gents, we don't have any protection um, on the oh, outside of the ring. So. Mr. Steven Frick is laying the punishment on Jonathan Hudson hard here. My God, we knew this was going to be a brutal match, Benji Neptune. But what we are seeing right here, Mr. Steven Frick came into this match apparently with the idea of permanently injuring Jonathan Hudson. Hudson trying to make valiantly try. Well, wait a minute. Steven Frick just took the turnbuckle off the corner. Oh, my God, Benji. Now, you, you know, this is not looking good at all. How dangerous it could be with that, that turnbuckle exposed like that. No cushioning. No cushioning to protect any of them. Talk about concussions. Oh, Hudson fights back, though. Clothesline. Steven Frick on the top. He's back in the ring. Tornado, tornado four brings Hudson down. Hudson goes for the pin. One, two, three, and Jonathan Hudson just he scores the second fall. What a warrior! Wow, incredible comeback by Jonathan Hudson. Referee Jim Bragg now making the count on Stephen Frick. I don't think he is getting back. Well, Jim Bragg. Wait a minute, it's, well, well, this could be it because Jim, Jim Bragg's already up to, whoa, okay, oh, close, almost, almost, wow, just a heartbeat away from this match being over. Steven Frick makes it to his feet. Oh, but a play and low blow by Steven Frick. But anything goes in this match, Benji Neptune. Normally that would be a disqualification, but in a Texas death match, anything goes. That just a blatant and vicious blow to the to, well. It was a low blow. To, oh my gosh! Right now, he is desperate. He just oh. a low blow. Now he's getting those. Well, I hate to say it, Jonathan Hudson. Jonathan Hudson used to sing bass, but I promise he'll be singing soprano tonight after that one. My goodness. Steven Frick now with the cord, with the cord around the throat of Jonathan Hudson. Benji Neptune, Mr. Steven Frick is literally trying to kill Jonathan 
I'm hot sitting here and I'm stingy Neptune. There's nothing that can be done. The referee should break. He can't stop this. There's nothing that he can do right now other than make the count. Jonathan Hudson has a family and Stephen Frick does not care. He doesn't care. He is literally not just trying to win this match. He's trying to end the career of Jonathan Hudson. And possibly end the life of Jonathan Hudson here tonight. Benji Neptune, I, I mean, I, this is an incredible match, but I do not like how far Steven Frick has taken things tonight. He's going way too far. There's children in the crowd. Maybe one of those children is Jonathan Hudson's. He's just trying to murder you him. Never know. And Steven Frick now, he's got a chair. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and that chair. Right to the back of Jonathan Hudson. This match is so brutal, Benji Neptune. I don't know if we've ever seen a match this physical in the history of WWE Improving Ground. And look at the smile. Look at the smile of that demented man. Mr. Steven Frick, he is demented. He is crazy, he is insane. And he is trying to permanently injure, if not kill, Jonathan Hudson. And oh my God. Somebody that Larry in that seated position on the chair. Going for the pin. Oh, a somehow Hudson kicked out. How in the hell did Jonathan Hudson kick out Benji Neptune? Hudson is a tough man, but he may need to stay down for his own good. And he's coming back. He's going for the submission. He's going for the submission. He's going to cross face on. He's going to cross face. He's going to cross face. I can't believe this. I can't believe Jonathan Hudson has managed to fight back like this. And he's got the corner. He's got that corner around the face of Stephen Frick. And he is pulling with everything he has. Jonathan Hudson is now trying to end the career and possibly the life of Stephen Frick. It's happened. He's tapping. He's tapping. As he should. As he should. And Jonathan Hudson wins three balls in this. Can Steven Frick get up? If he can't get up, this match is over, Benji Neptune. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Steven Frick, oh my God! He is not done with Jonathan Hudson broke the count. He wasn't ready for this match to end. We've got the former WWE Proving Ground Champion against the former ECW Heavyweight Champion. What a match, Benji Neptune. What a match we have here tonight. I can't believe the brutality we've seen in this Texas death match. Hudson sets Frick in reversal by Frick. Drop hold into the chair. Oh my God. That might be enough to knock Hudson out at this point. Hudson is down and Hudson is hurt, Benji Neptune. Do you think he'll be able to come back again? I don't know. I don't know about, about that one, Sean. I've seen many people take shots like that and all of them Both men are down. And this match, it will continue to one man simply cannot get up. Both men, they are so beaten, they are so hurt, they are so worn out now. How they are continuing this match, I just don't understand how both of these men are still fighting. They're both, they're oh, back on their they're feet again. Up. Oh, and I, wow. Jonathan Hudson, where is he getting this strength, Benji Neptune? Where is it coming from? Sends him in reverse. Oh, Rick. oh and Rick Hudson, Hudson. Oh, he hit that exposed. Oh, and he hit that exposed turnbuckle. I can't believe it. I don't know how Jonathan Hudson is kicking out at this point. I don't know how he's continuing. I don't know how either men's continuing at this point. This is such a brutal battle, Benji Neptune. Have you ever been in a fight this brutal? I know you've had a lot. I've had a lot, but to that extent, I have not. I mean, this is rare. It's rare to see two men completely laid on the line like Mr. Stephen Frick and Jonathan Hudson are doing here tonight at WWN Proving Ground. I cannot believe this match hasn't ended yet. I cannot believe both of these men are continuing to battle. We are going to remember this match for a very long time. We are, we are indeed. The fans trying to get behind Jonathan Hudson, trying to get him back. 
trying to give him another, another win here. But Steven Frick is on top. Right now, Hudson, three falls to none, and I'm shocked. I'm shocked that Steven Frick wasn't able to pin Hudson in that last, that last move. But, but Hudson, well, what? He says he's taking him out right now. He's saying this is over. What is about to happen? Here he comes. Oh, no. What, what, what? Frick is fighting out. Frick is fighting he's out. He's fighting him. He's fighting him with everything he has. Frick puts Hudson. Well, Hudson comes fighting back. Uh-oh. And Frick oh. goes into the exposed turnbuckle. A taste of his own medicine. Turnbuckle suplex. Unbelievable! This is gonna be it, Benji Neptune. This has to be it. it Mr. Steven Frick, he hit that exposed turnbuckle with full force and then takes that brutal German suplex from Jonathan Hudson. Benji Neptune, this, this has to end at this point. I don't know, but Jonathan Hudson's not even going for the pin. Instead, he's picking up the steel chair. He's actually kissing the chair. Are you kidding me? What is he gonna do, Benji Neptune? Looks like he's, he's a wait a minute, wait a minute, it's El Staro. Wait a minute, El Staro. Hudson's not playing that. What is the Staro doing out here? What's anyway? he doing? What is he doing? Wait, the mask is coming off. Where's that? Andy Mac? Mac? I knew it. I knew that was Star of the Show, Andy Mac. And Hudson has him up. Has him up. Spear. Spear by Stephen Frick. Spear by Stephen Frick. That's and that's Andy, Andy Mac. Andy Mack interfering in this match. We knew El Astaro was Andy Mack. He wasn't fooling anybody. But what's he doing out here interfering in this match? Again, anything goes, anything goes. There can't be a disqualification. But Hudson has not been beaten. He has not been stopped. Both men are still down. And my God, what is coming next? I don't know how much more either of these men can take Benji Neptune. This Texas death match has been incredibly brutal, brutal, brutal. This is a career shortening and possibly career ending type of match. I believe that both these men were ready. Well, I think I think Hudson is done. I think he I think he's lost. Spear by Frick! Spear by Frick! One, two, and three! Steven Frick! Mr. Steven Frick. Steven Frick wins this fall. Somebody get Andy Mack out of here. This is lovely. Will Jonathan Hudson be able to get up? Benji Neptune, I don't know. I, I know he's, he's fought back so many times in this match. He's showed so much intestinal fortitude. But will he be? He is unbelievable. Andy Mack with a chair to the knee. Andy Mack with a chair to the back of Hudson's knee. Are you kidding me? His ACL is crazy right now. Wait a minute, Jim Bragg, is he counting or not? What is going on? Is he counting or not? What is going on? Jim Bragg looks like he doesn't know what to do. He is suspecting Andy Mack of hitting John. I don't know. But the thing is, there is no rules. There's no rules. Jim Bragg is laying down the count. Are you kidding me? Will Hudson be able to get up? He might not get up. Sean might not get up. That was a well, apparently he's getting up. He's getting up. He's got him up. What a warrior. The fact that he's getting up. Oh, he's up again. He's up again. I'm not here again by Stephen Frank. Spear again by Steven Frick. Another three count. And again, another. Will, will Hudson get back up from this shot? What do you think? Come on, Hudson, stay in there. Stay in there, don't you give up. Andy Mack is still in his corner. This is not looking good. This is not looking good, Sean. It's a pure chaos right here, Benji Neptune. This is absolutely insane. insane. Can Jonathan Hudson get to his feet? He is trying with everything he has. He's trying with everything he has. But Hudson is obviously hurt. He 
physically can't stand him on that knee. Frick is looking desperate right now as well. Jonathan Hudson up and spear again by Frick. How much more can one man take? Mr. CB Frick. That's three spears now that have happened in this match. Jim Bragg is putting on the count. Can Hudson get up after three spears in a row, plus the chair shot by Andy Mack? Could this be it? Is this? That's it, oh my gosh. Here is Mr. Texas death match, but with help from star of the show, Andy Mack. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, and Andy Mack going on the attack here with the chair. Andy we're Mack gonna, wants a chill. Benji, they're gonna need some help. They're gonna need some help. Oh! Benji Neptune just left the, he just left the Eagles death. He's just left, just left the Eagles death. Trying to permanently injure Jonathan Hudson here with this chair. This is crazy. Andy Mack loving this and enjoying this. This has got things are completely out of control. We gotta get some help in here to break this up before Jonathan Hudson is permanently injured. Here comes here comes here comes some help now. I can't believe what we've seen here tonight, wrestling fans. This is unbelievable. Steven Frick with a controversial win in this Texas death match over Jonathan Hudson, but then the attack afterwards by Andy Mack and Steven Frick on the knee of Jonathan Hudson. Right, fans, next week we already have a huge anything goes six man street fight and we're gonna have so much more for you fans for, for several incredible co-hosts tonight. I'm Sean Davis, we'll see you next week here at WWF Proving Ground. <laughs> Is that exactly what I told you was gonna happen or what? Jonathan Hudson, El Estero, are you kidding me? Proving ground management, I'm playing hee-haw and ha-ha, you can't keep up with the star of the show. Imagine what's going to happen when I get serious and Jonathan Hudson, it's about to get really serious with you and me. I told you a few weeks ago that I was tearing up the script and writing a new one. And Jonathan Hudson, with your anger, with all your moxie and all your gusto, step by step, word by word, letter by letter, you followed the script to a T. And now it's time. You've risen above Jonathan Hudson. I've beat Jonathan Hudson. It's time to finish this as we approach the final act of this major production. Next week at the Proving Ground, I write off. <laughs>